Lisa. Heading into the, these games in, in London in 2012, all the talk around women's hurdling was around Lolo Jones. But ever since January, I've been following a hurdler by the name of Kelly Wells, who by far has the most interesting backstory of not just any track athlete that I've ever met, but just of anyone, any athlete. That's a big statement given all the people you've done stories on. Her story is horribly ugly. It's gonna make you mad. Uh, it's going to move you, and I hope it's going to inspire you as, as well. But Kelly Wells is her name, and she's made a career out of jumping over hurdles. But nothing at all compares to the obstacles that she's had to overcome in her life. every hurdle that she jumps over, it's like a hurdle that she has jumped over in her life. I got a bronze. My bronze feels just like the gold. Kelly Wells was born to run. Her father, Fred, a machine operator, and her mother, Jeanette, a teacher's aide, were high school track stars. Her older sister, Tony, competed on a track team in their hometown of Richmond, Virginia, and by the age of four, Kelly was tagging along with her. I was in the way, I know I was, but like in my mind, like I'm just as big as you guys, I can do it, I, I can do whatever you're gonna do. So, you know, I would, you know, run behind them and the coach would be like coaching me and... Uh... She had like this drive because she never wanted to give up, even when the coach would be like, this is too much for you, you know, you're, you're still little, um, she would just say no and keep going. By the time she was eight, Kelly was the fastest sprinter in her age group and was traveling across Virginia to compete with her track team. To cover Kelly's expenses, her mother had to work extra jobs. We were really close. She was my biggest fan, like when it came to track, and she supported me in everything. Kelly was a mama's girl. The more outgoing side of Kelly, she got that from her mom. The sweetness, she got from her mom. And her looks, she got from her mom. In 1990, just before her ninth birthday, her parents separated. Kelly's father moved out. Her mother, Jeanette, started seeing a man named Richard Rick Gomes, who worked at the same school. I thought he was like the coolest guy ever. Like he was a PE teacher, so he was like in the stuff that I was into, sports, like we'd play basketball and he would take me to go run. So I loved him as a child, loved him. The following year, Kelly's mother moved her, her sister, and her younger brother into Gomes's house in a neighboring town. That's when things like started to change. It was like I met a different person. I was in his home, his rules, you know, what he said went. I saw like his anger come out. He seemed to just have some kind of power over my sister. The way he spoke to her, it was like, you know, get me this, do this. You know, don't say that. You know, don't sit that way. Button your blouse. And I'm just looking at him like, who's he talking to? <laughs> and she said, oh, no, it's fine, it's fine. It just means that he loves me and, you know, he really cares about me. He'd stay out, like, super duper late, drinking and doing drugs with his friends. And then my mom would be angry. So then they would argue about it and be, then they would just, you know, go from there. Was he physically abusive to your mother? Mm -hmm. In, in what way? Um, I'd see him hit her before, and I'd like to see him like push her on the ground, stuff like that. By the time she was 13, Kelly was dealing with her family's troubles by excelling on the track. Almost single-handedly, she led her team to its first winning season. She was overcoming obstacles, literally and figuratively. What was it about hurdling as opposed to just sprinting? Right. That I you liked. I think it chose me. I kind of excelled at that more than anything else. How you were able to be so successful with everything else that was going on? This was easy. Home was hard. Like, this is the easy part. It was kind of like just my home away from home, my haven, like nothing bad would happen out here. Off the track at home, 
Kelly says the situation with her mother's boyfriend went from bad to worse. I remember I got sick once and he said he was gonna rub Vicks on my chest, but by that time I started developing, you know, as a young woman. So he wanted to rub Vicks on my chest, but it was like, you know, my breasts were being felt and he would just always find ways to like touch me or like be close to me or like have me sit on his lap. And I remember um, there's one time I got in trouble for something, but he made me like sit on his lap, like totally nude and like talk about what I did wrong. And I wanted to get dressed, but like he wouldn't let me put on my clothes. What did your mom say to you? She would be like angry at me and jealous of me, like because he would be, you know, rubbing on me, touching on me, treating me like the woman. And then she was just there. What were you thinking? Why isn't my mom helping me? Kelly says Gomes continued to touch her throughout high school. He also threatened to punish her if she ever talked, fearing her mom and siblings would be split up or that she'd be taken off the track team. Kelly decided to tell no one. Kelly did a really good job of disguising what was going on with her. It's like she was holding on to something, but you couldn't quite put your hands on it. Then one day in 1998, during Kelly's sophomore year, she left practice with a pulled muscle. When she got home, her mother's boyfriend, Rick, was there. He would massage my back and like my hamstring um, to try to make it better. And so um, it was in the room at night, dark, it was just him and I in the room, and he was, you know, massaging me. And then I remember he inserted fingers, and I told my mom the next day. Like, I don't really remember her being upset. How often was that behavior with you? A lot. Like out of a seven day week, maybe three. How far did Rick go? Uh, there's a rape, but I don't talk about it. You can't I, talk about it with I don't me? go into detail about it. What can you tell me? Um, that's where I lost my virginity. It just, like, it changed me as a person. Like, because those are the people who are supposed to keep you safe. And it wasn't safe. So... Three weeks after she says she was raped, Kelly moved in with her father, who lived in a condo across town. Kelly made a few comments that I've been through a lot. Well, Kelly, why didn't you tell me some of this before? What happened? She never would tell me. I never would pry it out of her. That was it. It was closed door. It was Pandora's box shut up and sealed. And that's how she wanted it. Kelly never went to the police, and Rick Gomes, who had no record of any previous sex crimes, continued to live with Kelly's mother. Five weeks after she says she was raped, on a Saturday night in May of 1999, Kelly was out with friends. It was the week before her district championship. When she realized it was late, she rushed home. On her way, she got stuck in traffic. There was a car accident just down the road from her father's house. A few hours after she finally arrived, her father walked into her bedroom. He wakes me up at like five o'clock in the morning and I'm like, am I getting in trouble for missing curfew? Like, this is a bit extreme. I just said, Kelly, there's been an accident. It was the accident Kelly had driven past on her way home. Rick Gomes was reportedly driving drunk when his car collided with another vehicle. Its 20-year-old driver was killed. In the passenger seat of Gomes's car was Kelly's 43-year-old mother, Jeanette. She was pronounced dead at the scene. I asked my dad, where's Rick? Because in my mind, I was going to kill him. That was it. If he was in the hospital with wires and tubes hanging out of him, I was going to rip everyone out of him. And my dad was like, well, he died too. And I was like, good. 
In the wake of her mother's death, Kelly was faced with a decision whether or not to compete in the high school district championships three days away. If you say you're gonna do something, you just do it. Like, that was my mom. Like, she said she's gonna do it, she's gonna do it. And I knew my team relied on me heavily. <laughs> she, she, ran, she ran a race. Um, it was a huge meet that week. It made sense that if that's how Kelly wanted to deal with it was to run, then that's what we were gonna support her by doing. Kelly broke four meet records, won six events, and led her team to first place. The very next day, she buried her mother. When she was gone, like, I didn't want to taint her image because we've all been a slave to something. We've all had an addiction, and she just was so weak for him. And, like, I never want anybody to say anything bad about her, like, ever. Kelly continued to overcome the obstacles in front of her. Senior year, she won the state hurdling championship. She received an athletic scholarship to Hampton University in Virginia, where she became a two-time All-American. After college, Kelly set her sights on becoming an Olympian. July 6, 2008, the U.S. Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon. The semifinals for the women's 100-meter hurdles. For Kelly, it was a chance to make it to Beijing and achieve her Olympic dream. I couldn't get up because it just hurt so bad. I was just crying and crying and crying because it felt like my Olympic dream was like stolen from me. Kelly had a severely torn hamstring. Doctors told her she may never run again. And if she did, they said, she would never regain her speed. For the first time in her life, there was nowhere to run. I was a lot more emotional than I should have been. Just anger or tears. Track is just how I deal with things. Like running practice is how I deal with things. And I didn't have a way to deal with them, so I had to figure out another way. During that time, Kelly says she began the process of healing. She started writing a blog. The sexual abuse began. One night it went too far. I believe my innocence was taken. I would forever be changed. I felt like I was running for my life. As her mind healed, so did her body. June 26, 2011, the U.S. Outdoor Championships in Eugene, Oregon. Kelly is on the same track where her Olympic dream had been shattered three years before. This is the final of the 100-meter hurdles. And this is a good start in the first hurdle. And it is uh, Crawford, Carruthers alongside. And here comes Harper as well. And coming down to the line, it's Kelly Wells that has the lead. Final hurdle, and Wells will win it with Crawford in second. So she makes her first world championship team. The wind is legal, 12.50. It's been lining up to for Kelly Wells. And we talked about her discipline. Every hurdle that she jumps over, it's like a hurdle that she has jumped over in her life. I think I'm much more equipped to deal with it now. And I don't hold a sadness in me anymore. I feel free. Title and overcome with emotion, <laughs> Kelly Wells. Coming up on E60. Hello, you're gonna be naked today. First, My hip has done it again. He is the best player in baseball. 
With movie star looks, he drives fast cars and dates Hollywood stars. What was it like dating somebody who was coming off an abusive relationship? The biggest names and the best stories in sports. This is E60.